Hello everyone, this is Shweb Yaqub. I'm a subject specialist of AFM. Guys, if you are appearing in AFM exam, you must be worried about the theory of the AFM. You know, about 55 to 60% of the exam is of discursive nature, is about the theory. So you need to consider following points while writing theory in the exam. So I am discussing one by one. Number one point is whenever examiner requires about the discussion of the assumption in the question, do not state assumption straightforwardly in the answer. For example, if it is written that free cash flows will increase by 4% for the forcible future in the question, it is written that free cash flow will increase by 4% for the forcible future. If you are stating this in the answer, you will get minimal marks. You will not get maximum marks. Why? Do not state the assumption. Discuss the assumption. You have to discuss the assumption. Like you have to, you have to write it that it is unrealistic that free cash flows will grow with a growth of 4% till the foreseeable future. Because no company can grow more than the growth of the economy. It depends upon the economy. For example, it is written that inflation will remain at 5% for next 5 years. You have to discuss. You, you will write that. It is unrealistic. How can inflation will remain constant for 5 years? So, if you are just stating the assumption, examiner will not give you marks. You have to discuss the assumption. Remember this. That is number 1 point. Number 2 point. Always link your discussion with the scenario. Those candidates who link their discussion with the scenario, they will get better marks. If you are writing general answer in advanced financial management, you will not get marks. You will only get the minimal, the below average marks, if examiner is kind. Otherwise, you will not get marks. So always link your answer with the scenario. You have to discuss according to the scenario. You cannot state general answer, general theory in the in, in, in your final exam. That is number two point. Number three point, do not make your answer brief. Explain it. If the word is explain, if the word is discussion, you cannot answer, you cannot provide answer in one bullet point. You have to explain it. Although, it shouldn't be a very lengthy answer, but it shouldn't be a very brief answer either. Do not state answer in one line. You have to make a paragraph, at least it should be two liners, two and a half liners or three liners. And remember, there is a general assumption that to earn one mark, you're, you should state one point. In order to earn one mark, you should state one point. In order to earn two marks, you should state two points. So if there is a discussion of advantages and there are three marks for it, you should state three advantages at least. There are few questions where two marks are available for one point. In that case, it will be quite obvious when the points are not that much great, then obviously there would be two marks for one point but in majority cases, there would be one mark for one point. So number one point was, do not state the assumption, challenge the assumption, discuss the assumption. Number two points, number two point was, relate your discussion, relate your every point of discussion with the scenario. Number three point, your answer shouldn't be very brief. It should be at a optimal or ideal level. Number four point, Candidates, those candidates who discuss those assumptions which are not generally available in the question, they will get better marks. For example, if it is written that uh, inflation is 5% for the next 5 years, obviously you will state that assumption, you will discuss that assumption, but you, if you discuss other assumption as well, for example, it is written that depreciation will be equal to the replacement cost. It's a very famous assumption in merger acquisition of AFM. But if you discuss in this way, 
that depreciation is based on historical cost replacement cost will be based on current costs so it is not it is not optimal it is not like ideal to match the historical depreciation with the current replacement cost if you discuss in this way you will get better marks so you have to go one step further you have to go deeper in order to earn more marks if you only discuss those assumptions which are available on the face of paper you will get average marks for example inflation is 5% for example revenue is increasing by 3% for example fixed cost is increasing by 2% you are only discussing these assumptions you will not get the full or the better marks but if you go one step further and discuss those assumptions which are not available on the face of the paper you will get better marks for example cost of capital 10% is given no information is given and if you discuss in a detail that co although cost of capital is given 10% but no other information is given how this has been calculated whether it has taken the effect of the risk of the project whether it has taken the effect of the uh, new involvement new project changes so if you discuss in this way if you go one step further you will get better marks compared to other candidates so this point is important next important point is if you challenge the assumption like if you discuss few assumptions that these cannot be accurate for example if there is a term given that uh, cash flows will increase by 6% for the foreseeable future but economic economic growth is lower than that if you discuss uh, in this way although we are considering the growth at 6% but it is unrealistic it is not viable it is not operationally possible if you discuss in this way you will get better marks so you have to challenge the assumption as well to not accept everything on the face of it next point you have to proper label your answer give proper heading for example if you are making the report to the board of directors introduction number 1 heading number 2 heading number 3 heading conclusion for example if you are writing the pros and cons give the paragraph pros give the heading cons then discuss if you are writing the advantages advantages disadvantage proper label your theoretical answer similarly proper label your numerical answer part a write the part a right if you are calculating npv write the heading npv bold it make uh, some uh, like headings bold in order to identify so proper label your answer your answer should be well structured your answer should be properly labeled so by looking at the answer it is quite obvious that what you are writing so create ease for the marker create ease for the examiner if you are creating ease for the examiner you will get better marks even you you will get full marks so proper labeling is a next point you know there are 20 professional marks so i am discussing one of the professional skill that is analysis and evaluation in order to get full marks in analysis and evaluation uh, remember these words your answer should be comprehensive and well structured if your numerical answer is well structured and if you have discussed that numerical answer and link it with the scenario you will get full marks for the analysis and evaluation next is skepticism you will get full marks for skepticism if you challenge the assumption you know i am working in a company uh, as an as an investment advisor and on daily basis people are sending their proposal uh, to evaluate so if i accept their proposal if they if i accept their figures everyone believe their their company will grow in next 5 years by, by their, their their growth is like skyrocketing they will do the wonders but remember one thing do not accept anything on the face of it 
if somebody is telling that growth is 5%, growth is 50%, do not accept. You are financial consultant, advisor, financial ad, senior financial managers. But you have to think. You have to think that the other person is providing information. You have to be skeptical. Do not accept the other person information on the face of it. He's not your relative. He's not your friend. Do not trust them. Analyze it. Challenge the assumption. If he's saying growth will be 10%, how? Economy is going down. Interest rates are up. How will you perform by 10%? That is skepticism. You have to challenge the assumption. Commercial Ecoman is you have to commercially judge the project based on the information given whether this project is going to outperform, underperform. You can also include the practical examples in order to strengthen the discussion. Number four scale is communication. Communication scale will only be checked in the question number one. That will be in the report format. So I will discuss the report format in a separate video, but in a brief to the board of directors, you will give the introduction, then you will make the body of the report, and then you will give the conclusion, then you will write date and from. Remember, you have to proper label the report. So please do consider all these points. These will be very helpful for you to score the maximum marks in exam. Thank you so much.